that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Joshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach about the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses top Mount Sinai, and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, <coughs> and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely <coughs> nothing escapes the pattern. The ten primary constitutions Constitutional objectives and aims of the Bible class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sect, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstitions skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons, the children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh, from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua, the Messiah, the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is, speak the truth. We will begin this evening session with a prayer by Dr. Joseph Parks, followed by a scripture reading by Dr. Dottie McNeil. 
Dr. Park. Father Yahweh, creator of heaven and earth and all things therein. We are thankful that you have allowed us to assemble, that you have given us the strength and the will to come out tonight, that we might be further enlightened according to your purpose, plan, and plan. We pray for those who have left out of here, Father, that they may return before it's eternally too late. And for those who cannot attend, we pray for them also. We thank you for all things that you have given us. And we are grateful for the things you have taken away from us that we did not need. That we might be included in the body. And we thank you for that most precious gift, your Son and our Savior, Yahshua Messiah. And for the knowledge that there is only one name by which we can be saved. And that you have given us that name. Father, we thank you for all these things in that name. Yahshua Messiah, let us all say. Good evening. Good evening. I'll be reading 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. I'll be reading out of a Schofield Study Bible, inserting the true names. That's 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of Yahweh. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Yahshua the Messiah and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech, my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of Yahweh. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of Yahweh in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which is Elohim, ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the king of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men, the things which Yahweh hath prepared for them that love him. But Yahweh have revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of Elohim. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of Yahweh knoweth no man, but the Spirit of Elohim. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of Yahweh, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of him. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth the things, excuse me, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of Yahweh, for they are foolish unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, Yet he himself is judged of no man. For who have known the mind of Yahweh, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Yahshua, the Messiah. That was 1 Corinthians, the second chapter.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Parks and Dr. Godwin. Yeah. Before we call on our first speaker, I'd like to remind the class once again to please silence all cell phones and any electronic devices so as not to disturb the speakers that come off to the floor. Now at this time, it is an honor and a pleasure to call on for our first speaker from our Springfield class. We'd like to call on the Vice President, Dr. Shirley Rainey. Dr. Rainey. I'd like to say good evening to the class. Good it's indeed an honor and a pleasure to stand before you to speak of those things which Yahshua has revealed unto me in this last physical age. And uh, give me revelation. Three and eight. Fellas. I said twelve and eight. What did I say? Three and eight? Well, I'm off to a rough start here. <laughs> Revelation twelve, 12 verse seven. Mm -hmm. And there was war in heaven. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Mm -hmm. And the dragon fought in his angels mm -hmm. and prevailed not. He didn't prevail. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. Mm -hmm. And the great dragon was cast out. He was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. Satan. Called the devil and Satan. Which deceiveth the whole world. That's what I was in. Which deceiveth the whole world. Now, it's the deception that that satanic spirit will put on you. Mm -hmm. I mean, really being deceived. I mean, sometimes you look and say, how in the world somebody knows that the name of salvation is Yahshua, and then you want to switch it up and just use what you want to use. Mm -hmm. but, well, that's the deception of the devil. And see, I know firsthand how he can deceive me. I've experienced it. When I was a, I'll just say kid, there was a girl next door. She's about five or six years older than I was. Her name was Maxine. And one day she told me, she says, you go out and find a pretty rock, a little big pretty rock, and you go find a four-leaf clover. And I'm listening. She said, and God will give you a penny. My day that day was consumed going out <laughs> finding this rock. We had a field right behind the house. So I go out I went out and found this rock. And man, I had a heck of a time <laughs> finding a four-leaf clover. 
And Janice Buffington told me, she said, man, I got a whole yard full of them. <laughs> well, we didn't have no grass yard. It was dirt. <laughs> when I'm looking, I just couldn't find one. I could find a three-leaf, but I could not find a four-leaf clover. So after searching for some time, she came up and she said, Well, we'll take a, a leaf on one of the three-leaf clovers <laughs> and put it with another three-leaf clover, and you'll have four leaves on this clover. I said, All right. Now the next thing you got to do, you go put this in the Bible. I said, all right, I can do that. I went, I put it in the Bible. And she said, you pray the Lord's Prayer. I said, all right. So that's what I went and did. Put that in the Bible. I said the Lord's Prayer. I got that done. She said, all right, now we're going to go out. We're going to break this rock. And you're going to get a brand new penny. <laughs> I said, okay, I, I'm going to do that. So I went out there. I got a bigger rock than this one rock. <laughs> Slammed it down on there. I see no new penny. She said, hit it again. I slammed it down there again. And lo and behold, there was a brand new penny laying amongst that rock. Now look, folks. I went a lot of years and couldn't nobody tell me no different. There was an imprint of a penny hidden on that rock. He said, now God done gave you that penny. And folks, I believe. But see, Thing ever was, I was, I got, I just fell to deception. I mean, I seen it with my own eyes. You couldn't tell me no different that that penny didn't come out of that rock. Because I seen the imprint on one of those pieces of rock where that penny laid at. And folks, now this is deception. I was a grown man. And I can be amongst, out there on the job, and they be talking. And I had to speak up, you know, they would be talking their doubts about the creator. Was there a God? Well, see, well, I can speak up and say, hey, one thing I do know, there's a God. And well, how come you so sure of it? He gave me a penny. <laughs> and hey, I was serious about that. He gave me a penny. Now I know there's a God. Well, they, had, they just got laughed at all. My family, you know, people just like, are you saying this for real? But see, to me, it was, it was real to me because I seen it. I had been deceived by that. And you couldn't tell me no different. And I used to tell my family, I said, well, if I ever see Maxine again, I'm going to get her, and I'm going to bring her over here, and I'm going to prove to every one of you, sitting around here laughing at me. Well, the day came, I think Maxine was living in Detroit at the time. She'd come down for a visit. And they called me. They said, uh, Maxine's over here. I said, Maxine's at the house. Said, yeah, I'll be right over. I couldn't get over there quick enough. <laughs> I got in there and I said, Maxine, I need you to bag me up on this. She looked at me, you know, looking at me, and I was start telling the story. And she looked at me, not quite at me. I said, Maxine, you think now, because this happened. You were right there. And then finally, she just busted out in a, a great laugh. She's just laughing. And I said, Maxine, 
Tell them that this really happened. She said, Butchie, she said, I was holding that penny in my hand. <laughs> and I tossed that penny down there on the ground. And see, I'm still ready to argue. I said, wait a minute. I see the imprint of that penny in that rock. She said, no, I just tossed it. And see, that's how you can be deceived. And I mean, you got conviction. I mean, once you trick, you trick. Right. And see, and couldn't nobody tell me nothing different. And here she come telling me, no. No, it didn't happen like that. I tossed that penny down there. I tricked you. And, see, and I'm still wanting to fight about it. Because I have seen the imprint of that penny on that on the inside of that rock. And just, just convinced me. Now see, that's deception. You see, then you wonder how in the world these people are getting fooled. And how they're going to stand up and look you right in the eye. And going to tell you that, hey, Yahshua the Messiah, Yahshua is not the name of salvation. See? Well, what is it? They will tell you, Dr. Henry C. Kimberly, tell you, Jesus Christ is Lord. See? But folks, they just deceived. See? That's, hey, that's the power of that old satanic beast. He will do that to you. And see, Well, I didn't know if that was Joe Biden or not. <laughs> see, well, see, I mean, this, this, these are the wiles of the devil. This is what, we're, this is what we're fighting against. See, because that, that old, that old serpent, he can grab you and twist you all kind of ways. And hey, have you believe in something that is not? Hmm. And the best proof I got is when it was done to me. And there was years you couldn't tell, hey, couldn't tell me. Oh, we got a God. How do you know? And I didn't care how silly I looked. I sat right there. He gave me a penny. Matter of fact, I said, he gave me a brand new penny. That's what it was, a brand new penny. <laughs> Folks, and I believed it. And you couldn't tell me no different. People just looked at me. I, didn't, you know, I really can't tell you how they was looking at me because I didn't care because I knew that I was, supposed, I was supposed to be telling the truth. And see, I was just telling the deception in my mind. See. Yeah. Give me a first key. Six and chapter eight. Six and eight? Yes. The door of the middle chamber was in the right side of the house. And they went up with winding stairs. Oh, give me second kings. I want to listen. Mm -hmm. Second kings six and eight. Second king, six and mm -hmm. Then the uh, king of Syria mm -hmm. warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of Yah Yahweh Elohim sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass passest not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come, are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the, uh, I'm sorry. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of Yahweh Elohim told him to, to and warned him of and saved himself there. Okay, hold up this up. Now, the king of Syria came down to make war against the king of Israel. And what he would, what he did when he come down to make war against the king of Israel. He grabbed his servants, the king of Syria did, grabbed his, his leaders of his army and called them together and said this to them and to them only, hey, such and such a place 
is we're working on camp that we may get these we may get these Israelites. Right. Now, Elisha, the prophet, he just went right up there and told the king of Israel, look, uh, don't you go camping here because that's where the king of Syria and his army is going to be waiting on you. So don't, hey, don't you go there. Well, happened once with the king of Syria. Man, how did they know where I was going to be at? They went back again. Told me, well, this is what we're going to do. So again, he went to a spot. He was waiting on the king of Israel and his army to come through. And here come Elisha. Say, hey, don't go this way or that way because he's going to be there waiting on you. So now, King of Syria down there waiting. The Israelites don't come that way. Now he's a little upset. <laughs> you know, and the closest thing I ever seen in my life was when Saddam Hussein, King of Iraq. Iraq he's mad. And he's got them all around and around on the long table. He's got this big old 45. He slams that down on the table. I want to know which one of y'all is going out telling the enemy what I'm getting ready to do. He picks that gun up. He's walking around that table. I want to know. They all sitting there. Not me, not me. Finally, he just get behind one and go boom. Shot his head off. Now, that's the way the king of Syria was. He wanted to know. So one of them jumped up and said, Hey, O king, that thou shalt live forever. But what you say in your bedroom, in your bedchamber, Elisha, the prophet of Israel, knows what you're saying. Now, that's who's telling the king of Israel what's going on. So he says, well, look, where is this Elisha at? Where is this prophet at? See, that I ate. I want this guy. Where is he at? Now, I'm kind of throwing my little garbage in there. It wasn't, it wasn't exactly that way, but ask how he was looking. Ask him what he sent out looking for him. And they said, hey, uh, he's down there in Dubai. Oh, yeah. So what he did, so we're going to go get him. He gathered up his army, man, they surrounded the town. And Elisha was there. Him and his servants. So they encamped around the town that night. Well, when the servant got up that morning, he's stretching. He go outside and look. Behold, the great army Syrians and chariots all around the town. So he trembling. He run back in the house. A lost master. A lost master. Chariots all around about us. What shall we do? What we gonna do? Yahweh opened his eyes that he may see. Amen. And he sits there and he tells his servant, there are more of us. Now he's talking to a servant. Us is two. Me and you. There are more of us than there is out there 
all around this town. Certainly looked at me. We went back out there, and Yahweh opened up that servant's eye. And then he seen all those chariots of fire and an angelic host around that town. Mm -hmm. Buddy, we'll worry about a thing after that. But see, the thing of it is, see, when we can think that we at our, we at our least will really be vulnerable, that's the way you got to just know that Yahshua's in you to fight all your battles, fight all those temptations. See, if a mountain, if a mountain of despair lands right there at your feet, you ain't got nothing to worry about if you know that Yahshua's in you. See, and folks, sometimes it looks like you just like want to come in here and some. People who like to count heads. See how many people is a class. Folks, the amount of people with all the angels sitting around here with them. See, ain't no number you can put on. See, this is Yahweh's assembly. And hey, he's taking care of it. He provides. See. Just like I done heard this choir, heard hear the choir sing, and you knew there was more than these few people sitting up here on this stage singing. You knew. You just hear the angels sing. Hey, angels everywhere when you come down here. So don't be living like, yeah, ain't no need me going next time because ain't nobody else coming. Hey, just want you to know that this is Yahshua. This is Yahshua's assembly. Yeah. Hey. He's gonna have in him who he wants. Hey. And don't ever, don't ever count these human heads down here and thinking this is Yahshua's assembly. Now, just just give you a run through the rest of that story. Alicia just took the whole army of Syria straight on into Samaria. That's the capital of Israel. And the first thing no king want to do is grab his sword and go kill him. And listen to them. Put them down. Feed them. Then you send them on their way. And, and that's what happens. That old satanic being ain't going to, just don't get him upset. And they went, went on back, went on back into Syria. Now, I just said that to try to inspire us to keep coming to class no matter what. I don't care how many empty seats are sitting in here. Yeah. First, I just be glad you got one of them filled up. But the thing of it is, see, don't count these humans in here thinking that's all we got in this school. Folks, this school can be, it's filled with angels every time those doors open. And the true gospel of Yahshua the Messiah is preached. See, it's filled up in here. And just get all caught up. Folks, this is the gospel. Now I want to get uh, another thing I want to get is. Yeah. Second Kings, thirteenth chapter. And I want to get Galatians chapter one. There was a man from Judah, a prophet from Judah. At this time, there was a division of Israel after the death of death of Saul. You had Jeroboam. Yahweh gave him the ten tribes. He didn't go out and conquer nobody. He didn't go out there and go get an army of northern Israelites though. Yahweh, Yahweh gave him those ten tribes to lead. And 
the Solomon's son Jeroboam, he had Judah and Benjamin. That's how that got. Well, anyway, Jeroboam he went down and he was ruling up there in Bethlehem. And what first things he did he went and made himself a golden path for Israel to come and worship. I got to excuse my artwork on Friday. city up here, the city of Dan. Now what Jeroboam did, what he gave instructions was, because if all the Israelites is going to Jerusalem, he said, wait a minute, I want them to come to Bethlehem and worship this golden calf. So he didn't want them He's here, trickling down here to Jerusalem. He wanted them in Bethel. And the ones here in, up here, uppermost part of Israel, he didn't want them coming down here because they come down here to this track. They may go on down there to Jerusalem. So he made a golden calf up here. So all these tribes up here, uppermost part of Israel, they go to Dan. So you had a calf here. <laughs> then you had one here. I overtook half. If you was part of the the lost tribes of Israel or the northern kingdom, that's where you went to worship at. Now, Benjamin and Judah, these two tribes down here, they went on in Jer Jerusalem where the temple was. And that's where they worshiped at. But Jeroboam wanted all these people to worship these calves. And that's so they would go, go down in Jerusalem to the temple to worship. It didn't have nothing to do about Jeroboam being big and bad and he caused that division. What happened was when Rehoboam got that leadership, he went, he went to the elders. And the elders of Israel said, look, what you're going to have to do is lighten up these burdens that you're putting on us. These burdens that your father put on us. In other words, make it understandable. Cut the taxes. You 
they ever said, like, if, if it was today, cut the taxes, you know, or we can have a more enjoyable life, like that. So that's what was going on back here. That's how Jeroboam got these people to go, go with him. Because Rehoboam said, now you think my, my father Solomon taxed you? You ain't seen nothing yet, because I'm really going to tax you and put you, put you to work. So all this time, there were battles between Jeroboam and Rehoboam. And all the, all the days that Jeroboam was king of Israel, there was fighting going on. That's what, but the point I want to make is this here. Yahweh sent out of Judah. These two tribes here. He sent a prophet up to Bethel where they had that golden calf. And he tried to prophesy against this golden calf. And, 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 at the, and the altar, I want to rent. I want it tore, tore down. And he told that prophet, he said, listen, the way you go out, the way you come in, don't go back out the same way. So this prophet went on up there to Bethel. And he prophesied against that altar. And King, King Jeroboam was up there doing service to this golden calf. And that prophet was prophesying against that, that calf and that altar. And Jeroboam will reach out and go snatch it. That's where his arm stayed. That's what Yahweh did to him. Now, read that little bit down in the Word. Before he reached out. First Kings thirteen four. All right. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of Yahweh that he had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him, and his hand which he put forth against him dried up, mm -hmm. so that he could not pull it in again. Could pull, could pull that arm back. Just drive, drive, drive it up, see. He's going to come out there and going to criticize this prophet that Yahweh has set up there in the Bethel. Hmm. All right, go ahead. The altar also was rent, mm -hmm. and the ashes poured out from the altar, mm -hmm. according to the sign which the man of Yahweh had given by the word of Yahweh. Right. And the king answered and said unto the man of Elohim, Entreat now the face of Yahweh thy Elohim, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored me again. Now he got his golden calf right there. Now he, he said nothing that golden calf, or those priests of that golden calf. He said, hey, I do Yahweh. You, you pray to Yahweh that my hand may be restored. All right, go ahead. And the man of Elohim besought Yahweh that the king's hand was restored him again, and it became as it was before. And he made his hand whole again. Now, he didn't get mad and, and, and try to knock that king's block off. He wouldn't be then treat Yahweh for it. Yeah, I'll go do it. He done it, and his hand was healed. All right, go ahead. And the king said unto the man of Yahweh, Come home with me. Mm -hmm. And refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of Elohim said unto the king, mm -hmm. If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee, and neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. In other words, he's got marching orders. When he's up out of Judah, Yahweh ain't giving him marching orders. You go up there. And you just 
destroy that home. That's fair. Huh. Well, then there comes this king. Come rest and refresh yourself. Come. Come in my house and relax and re refresh yourself. That prophet says, no, no, no. I hate that the marching orders from Yahweh. That's just like we were told. Certain things we were told in this school. Told us. Yahshua is the name of salvation. Care what you do, how nice, nice you want to treat me or wine and dine me, it ain't going to help a bit. Yahshua is the name of salvation. Folks, he said, come to class. And when you're here, be here. Care how, how you wine and dine me or, hey, we got this going on at 725. You better be over here. No, got to come to class. You understand that, folks? Hey, that's just the thing. When you get directions, see, you ain't got time. Just like when they crossed the Red Sea, couldn't be turning to the right, couldn't be turning to the left. Hey, you just got to march on. See, march straight, hey, straight on across that Red Sea, and right to right to this day, folks. We ain't got time to be messing around with these, I ain't going to call them yogis. We ain't got time to mess with these folks that want to sit around here and talk about changing the name of salvation to satisfy themselves. Look, folks, the name is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahshua. That's right. Yahshua is the name of salvation. Mm -hmm. So what can you tell me? That's going to make me change my mind. Nothing, see. I'm on that path, see. I can't be wavering, going to the right or to the left. I'm walking straight on in, see. Hey, and my belief is going to be right there. That's what I'm going to hold on to. Hey, hey, folks, we got a great thing down there. And don't you let nobody I don't care how high up they may be or how low they may be. Don't you let nobody take you away from this class. Hey, you got A. Just keep, just keep right on walking. Keep your eyes on Yahshua out of the side. Hey, you asked him for help. That's where our salvation lies. Ask Yahshua. See? Because, hey, you got people. Even though we know that we are steeped in this truth, raised up in this truth, and you got some raised up the same way, come leaders in this school, and going to turn around and tell you about salvation being in the name of Henry C. Kimber. You got the Pope of Rome over there saying, Jesus Christ. See? Don't care what nobody says. You hold on that which you know and you are confident in. See? Now, don't get deceived like I was by a gold penny. Don't get caught up in that. See? You believe in Yahshua. It's a spiritual thing down here. And folks, when Yahshua puts something on your heart, don't scratch your head and wonder, should I do it or should I not? If he's put it on your heart, you just go ahead and do it. Yahshua's leading and guide, guiding you. Let him. Get out of the way with, with, with our carnal thoughts. Mm -hmm. If it's in your heart to do it, do it. Now, got a little flex in there a little bit. Now, knee down. The reason I'm bringing this up about this prophet, Apostle Paul said in Galatians, first chapter, this is what he said. And he's saying that to the brethren. Right. Now go ahead and uh, 
Galatians 1, verse 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Yahshua the Messiah unto another gospel. I just marvel at that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just, just surprised that you down here at this gospel, and the next thing you, I, hear, I hear you about you over at Greater Grace. Mm -hmm. I just marvel at that. You over there believing in Jesus Christ. See? I just marvel at that. You over there saying Dr. Kinley as a name of salvation. I just marvel at that, folks. Now, go ahead. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Messiah unto another gospel, mm -hmm. which is not another. Ain't another. But go there ahead. be some that trouble you. And would pervert the gospel of the Messiah. Just going to pervert. In other words, just going to twist it, turn it, mm -hmm. do anything with it to get you to believe. All right, go ahead. But though we, or an yeah. angel from heaven. That's what Apostle preach. Paul said. See? Right. Now see, I want you to understand what he's saying here. When that prophet come upon Judah, see, when Yahweh gives you instructions, you don't care who it is. See? Listen, if you got it, got it from Yahweh, you got it. See? Ain't no need that king talking about, hey, come in and wine and dine with me. No, ain't gonna work. See? But that old satanic spirit, he, he can lie. Yeah. And he can tell good lies. See? Just like he did with me on that there. All right, now go ahead and uh, go ahead and finish reading what Paul said. But though we or an angel from heaven mm -hmm. preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. If you hear any other gospel, right, that other than that which has been preached unto you, let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. Now, that's what Paul said. Right. See, and all I can do is take it back to this prophet back here. And go, but go ahead. We got, got to show you where some deception's at. So, look, we don't get high and mighty in our heads and think, oh, we got, I, I, I'm all right. Uh, I'm just going to miss Bible school tonight. I'm okay. He's, he's watching over me. Now, go ahead. This how, look. This is how an old satanic beast of light. Mm -hmm. All right, now, go ahead and get down there for the, the uh, prophets. It's an old prophet. Old prophet up there in Bethel. And he had a couple of sons. And what this old prophet did when, the, when he was he was leaving our town. This is how, this is deception. And you sent from Yahweh. You got your marching orders. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got your road map for how you're going to go. You marching up. You're going up to Bethel. You're going to that, that golden calf and that altar. Mm -hmm. And you're going to tear it. It's in twain. You're going to rid it. Tear it up. And then you wouldn't eat with the king. That's the hierarchy there in, in this northern Israel in Bethel. We're going, to, hey, hey, look. Yahweh done told me what to do. I ain't supposed to eat, drink here, and he's supposed to go out the same way I came in. See? That's like, folks, that's marching order. Mm -hmm. And first thing is, then, then there comes this old prophet. Mm -hmm. And I do mean old, too, the old prophet. Mm -hmm. Here he comes. Well, his sons come home, and he tells them about this prophet to come up from Judah. Mm -hmm. So he asks his son, well, where is he at? That's why he doesn't, he gone. He gone, Daddy. But well, which way did he go? 
Went on down the road that way. Saddle up that old mule of mine. Let me go after him. Mm -hmm. Now he went and he caught that prophet. Mm -hmm. Of Judah. Yeah. And he told him. Hey. Uh, I'm a prophet. Like you. Yeah. See, here comes that big, big lie. See. I'm a prophet like you. Yeah. Come on back and uh, relax and rest yourself. Have some victuals with me. I ain't that prophet to use it. Now listen. I was told not sit around in here and eat with nobody. I come here, do what I had to do, and then I'm leaving. Oh, oh, no, that old prophet said. Listen, I'm a prophet just like you. And I've been told to go fetch you, bring you back, so we can eat together. And listen, these are orders from Yahweh. I see. Now, see, ask the lie that that devil can tell you. See, make it seem so good. Sit right there, sit across from that man, didn't blink an eye, and told him, Hey, I'm a prophet just like you. Yahweh! Yahweh told me to come get you. And you sit down, rest and relax yourself, and eat, eat some bread with me. So what did he do? Come right on back. Came right on back with that old prophet. Went in there, sit down. Eating vittles with him. And all of a sudden, yeah. in that prophet's heart, it was so good. You done lied. Yeah. You done lied. That old prophet looked at him. And he had nerve enough to tell that prophet, you in trouble now. I said, Yahweh told you not, don't be hanging around in here. You in trouble. And he said, now the best I can tell you, get on up and get out of here. So the prophet got on up. And then there was, and he left. Then there was talk about this dead man laying in the room. And beside him was a mule. And beside that mule was a lion. That lion ain't Ain't trying to eat that mule. Prophet laying there. He ain't trying to eat, eat, eat that prophet all the way up. He's just slaving. And then the old prophet said, Oh my goodness. That must be that prophet from Judea that came up here to prophesy against that golden calf and to rent that altar in twain. See, folks, now, now he done seen the truth. He done went, he went back, he got that prophet, brought him on back, gave order. Where you buried this prophet at? When I go, I mean, where, where you bury me at, I want that prophet buried beside me. And that's, that's what happened. You get over in the 24th chapter of Kings. When Josiah become king and went up there to the high places and seen that burial ground and asked him, well, whose place is that? That was that prophet that came up to Judea. That's his place. And you got another set of bones there. And that's that lying prophet that told him. Now, this is what we got to be careful about. A lie, that's a lying prophet. <laughs> that made that made that prophet from Judea made him this disobedient under Yahweh. You see, that's what we gotta watch. Care who what they say or who says it, I'm as high up in the school, don't make no difference. 
You end the marching orders, you got them, that's what you stick to. Yeah. You just stay, stay right in the truth. Okay, what, what nobody said. All right, now go ahead and uh, read that in Galatians. I want to finish that. Okay, Galatians um, 1 and 8. But though we, or an angel from heaven... Now, this is the second time he's telling his brother and Amen. Right. He done told him once. Now he's got to tell him twice. See? Yeah. Go ahead. But though we, or an angel from heaven... Though we, or an angel from heaven... Preach any other gospel unto you than that which was we preached unto you, mm -hmm. let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. And we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which was you have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or Yahweh? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of the Messiah. Now, if you want to sit around here and please a man, yeah. tell some man, then come along and tell the lie and tell you. Hey, here's the name of the Savior. Or tells you, hey, you follow me. You bow down and you worship me. See? You ain't been, hey, don't buy into that, folks. You stay, you stay on the path of the truth. See? Don't care what nobody says. Don't care how they jump up and down and holler. Hey, they may get up. And use great swelling words, see, to entice you. But see, all you got to know is the name of salvation. Never let that change. Hey, and if you need something, you call up on his name. Because he's the one. Now, whether you believe it or not, check your own hearts out. He's the one that's leading and guiding you. Along the way. See? And when, hey, when he puts something in your heart, just go ahead and do it. Yeah. Ain't no need trying to buck up and say, oh, it just don't sound right to be a little, little bit better this way. No. You just do what he said. See? And everything will be all right. See? Just believe in Yahshua. Right. And uh, there was something else. I want to get something, something else down there. That we're at the end of this age. What man and persons ought we to be? Mm -hmm. Seeing where we're, where we're at right. in this age. See. We ain't got time to be dilly dallying around. See. Right. But put your head on right. See. Hey, just trust in Yahshua. Mm -hmm. See. Hey, He will take care of you. See. He'll put in your heart what you're supposed to do. All right, well, fat folks, hallelujah. I'm very happy and glad to be here. I enjoyed what came forth from the first speaker. And I also have enjoyed the classes that we've had uh, so far. Uh, beautiful lectures. Lectures that if you take within your heart and mind, you'll be saved. If you believe, you understand? And that's the wonderful thing about this gospel. 
Now, I want to say this right off the top. Uh, when we talk about people not coming, you know, that's, that's in the hand of Yahweh. You understand? We can't force nobody to come here. You understand? So that's where they are in their heart and mind, you know. And uh, we just hope they come, but we can't force them. We'd like to see them. All right, now, get me, uh, get, I'm going to start with uh, this because uh, when you come down here and say you are uh, testing this gospel out and you also will attend church, there's a problem with that. Just got to tell you that. Now give me Acts 17 and 24. And we know that the children of Israel were gathered around in the wilderness of Sinai. And this wilderness of Sinai is the type of what? Fanning in Yahshua the Messiah. But on June the 6th, Yahweh spake unto the children of Israel. And they were gathered around the mountain laying down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to see if somebody's awake here. They were standing. Not laying down. Not sitting like we were sitting in chairs. And they are listening or hearing the words of Yahweh speaking at the top of this mountain unto them. Now, this is the first church or the spiritual uh, uh, essence with Yahweh speaking down unto the children of Israel. Right. All right? Now, get me uh, Acts 17. And I want you to start with 11, then skip on down to 20. <laughs> now, here's Paul. And he's in, he's in Athens. Okay, now read. Acts 17 and 11. Acts 17, verse 11. Mm-hmm. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Now why? Why is that? In that they received the word with all readiness of mind. So they were interested. Yes. They loved to hear the gospel. Mm -hmm. So they studied. Read. And that they received the word with all readiness of mind. They received the word, the word with readiness of mind. Read. And search the scriptures daily. Oh, wait a minute. They search the scriptures daily. Right. Not just once a week. See? But daily. So evidently they were interested. Mm -hmm. Because they searched and they wanted to find out about the creator of the heavens and the earth. All right, read. Now get down to 20. Acts 17 and 20. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. Mm -hmm. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. Now, look. When you hear that, they are, what, hearing strange things. Right. Now, when you try to teach someone new in the gospel, it's strange to them. Right. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. they, and they got a problem with that. They, and it has to take Yahshua and Messiah to convert them to be able to understand what is being taught unto them. Mm -hmm. All right, read. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. So they were interested in hearing something new. Right. And they're talking about it, see, and they're trying to find out about something new. Read. As I now, I'm going to tell you, this is, gospel is not new. It's the original gospel being preached through the law and the prophecy and telling about Yahshua the Messiah and what he has done for us. All right, read. Acts 17, verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill mm -hmm. and said, Ye men of Athens, mm -hmm. I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. Oh, they're superstitious, mm -hmm. see, because they're trying to look at various things, trying to understand things. But here's the man of Yahweh, Paul, 
having the Holy Spirit, and he's telling them, read. For as I passed by mm -hmm. and beheld your devotion, mm -hmm. I found an altar with this inscription, mm -hmm. to the unknown God. So now they are trying to find out all the gods, but they've got one that they're going to say the unknown God. In other words, if they've missed one, they got they pegged him as the unknown God. All right, read. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. Oh, wait a minute. Now he said, now you ignorantly worship. There's a reason why he's saying that, Bree. Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Now who is he declaring? He's declaring Yahweh unto them, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Read. Yahweh that made the world. Yahweh that made the world. Mm. Read. And all things therein. Uh huh. Seeing that he is ruler of heaven and earth. He's the ruler of heaven and earth. Read. Well, if not. In Wait a minute. Made. He dwelleth not in OT and what? Dwelleth not in temples made with men with temples with hands. made with men's hands. Mm -hmm. Now, if you talk to people. Out in the world, they believe there's God in their church. Right. I mean, they actually believe that. The God's in their church. Right? So he's telling them right there, that's a big mistake. See? Or read on. <clears throat> we find out where he dwells. Read. Acts 17, 24. Mm -hmm. Yahweh that made the world and all things therein. Seeing that he's ruler of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. So he doesn't dwell, and I don't care what your minister's going to say, that God, this is the house of God. You know, no, sir. See, read. Neither is worship with men's hands. And he's not worship with men's hands. So, hey, Mr. Pope, that's a problem, because that's what you're doing. See, read. Neither is worship with men's hands mm -hmm. as though he needeth anything. And he doesn't need anything. He, do, he doesn't need your money. Now, we're going to continue to read now. I want Amos 8 and 11. Until you read after that, after, uh, I'd like for her to get the uh, Amos 8 and 11. <clears throat> Amos 8, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh Elohim. He said, the days come, saith Yahweh Elohim. Read. That I will send a famine in the land. I will send a famine in the land. What kind of famine? Read. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water. No food or water. Read. But of hearing the words of Yahweh. Of hearing the words of Yahweh. I want you to know today. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Not hearing the words of Yahweh. All right? See? Now, this gospel has been all around the world. And peace missions. We are broadcasting on YouTube. Other schools are also doing that. Right. See? <coughs> so, it's a witness against them. Yahweh has provided this. This thing of YouTube and what have you, Zoom. See, to preach the gospel of Yahshua and the Messiah. All right, read. Read. There. Acts 17, yeah. verse 25. Mm -hmm. Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needeth anything. He doesn't need your money. So why are you doing it? See? Making yourself poor. See? Yeah. Read. Seeing he giveth to all. Life and breath and all. Things. Yeah, so he don't need you, your money. See? Because he gives you life, breath, allows you to walk around in this world. Read. And all things. Mm -hmm. And hath made of one blood of all nations of men for to dwell on all nations. Wait a minute, the earth. Now, of one blood? Huh? So we got black, we got white, we got Chinese, we got all that, we got. Uh, uh, persecution of the people because somebody's dark, see, or whatever, or they're yellow, see, mm. but they all got blood, and it is what? Red. Is that right? Red. So now that's it. Now, 
what we're trying to show you is the things that's out here in the world, the satanic spirit that's manifested in various people and various doctrines. See? And we got this old boy, the father of lies. He's lying to the people, taking your money, what have you. Read. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. And hath determined the times before appointed mm -hmm. and the bounds of their habitation. Mm -hmm. That they should seek. Oh, Lord. wait a minute. This is what he wants you to do. That you seek. Read. That they seek. Read. That they should seek Yahweh. Mm -hmm. If happily they might feel after him. Mm -hmm. And find him. Mm -hmm. Though he be not far from every one of us. So he's not far from every one of us. He knows you. He created you. He wants you to learn about him. See? Now, as, as this school, yes, we need Money for the lights, the gas, you know, the gas, you know, the functioning with the, the heat and what have you. So we do we, but none of the people that get up before you and teach or preach, we not we don't get paid, and we don't want to get paid because this gospel is free. You understand? Mm -hmm. All right, now get me Proverbs the seventh chapter. Now, I, like I said, this was the first church, see, and you, we've read in Acts the 17th chapter 24 verse to uh, the 30th verse that we find out that the first church was back here, and, and Paul's telling them that he does not dwell in temples made with hands. So we've got to find out where he dwells, all right? And before you get that, I want Ephesians 4 and 4, and I want Galatians 4 and 4. Mm -hmm. First, get the Ephesians, the fourth <clears throat> chapter and the fourth verse. Ephesians 4, verse 4. Mm -hmm. There is one body. There is one body. And one spirit. And one spirit. Even as we are called in one hope of your calling. And one hope of your calling, which is in Joshua the Messiah. Read. One Yahweh. One Yahweh. One faith. Mm -hmm. One what, what? One what? One, one faith. faith. Now, when out in the world, and you go say you went down, and there's a couple times I've done that, went down to the post office, and there were these people that was trying to uh, <laughs> have you go into their church or whatever and tell you about them. See, uh, it says there's one faith. Right. So you got to tell them, look, what faith? And when they said, what faith are you? I'm in the true gospel of Joshua the Messiah. That's the faith that I'm in. You understand? I'm not in no uh, 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 Methodist and, and what have you. Mm -hmm. No, we're in Joshua, in the body of Joshua the Messiah. All right, read. One Yahweh, one faith, one baptism. And one baptism. Wait a minute. They're trying to dump, have you be dunked in water. So there's one baptism. We're going to try to tell you about that. See, there's not several. See, it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Read. One Yahweh and Father of all, mm -hmm. who is above all, uh -huh. and through all, and in you all. Oh, he's in you all. See? But you've got to be awakened to that. Not everybody has the Holy Spirit. But you have the ability to have it by through him. See? Now get me Galatians. Galatians 4, verse 4. Mm -hmm. But when the fullness of the time was come. When the fullness of the time was come. Yahweh sent forth his son. Yahweh sent forth his son. This is in this post-Diluvian age when he sent forth his son. Read. But when the fullness of time was come, mm -hmm. Yahweh sent forth his son. Mm -hmm. Made of a woman. Made of a woman. Made under the law. Made under the law. Now that's another thing you have to understand. There was a law in this age. And he was made under the law. And we're going to have to find out what he was doing with this law. Read. To redeem them. To redeem them. That were under the law. Mm -hmm. 
that we might receive the Now wait a minute. We've got to find out who was under the law. What kind of law is it? Now give me, hold on, give me Romans the 8th chapter. I believe this, and then I want Romans the 9th chapter. There's a reason I'm doing this, okay? <clears throat> because if you attend this class, this should be the, the end of you attending any church. It's going to have to tell you. See? Because this is the true gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. He does not dwell in temples made with hands. See? Read. Um, <laughs> Romans 8 and 1. Mm -hmm. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua the Messiah. No, wait, but now. What are you talking about? That is in this age. You, you better get, you might as well get Hebrews 9 and 26. Because we're going to tell you about an end here. See? And then we got to tell you what he was doing. See? There's an end. Hebrews 9 and 26. Hebrews 9 verse 26. Mm -hmm. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. Since the foundation of the world. Read. But now once in the end of the world. Once in the end of the world. Have of he, this post diluvian age. This was the law given to the Jews and the Jews only. Mm -hmm. Alright, read. But now once in the end of the world uh -huh. hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. What sin was he putting away? And we're going to find out about that one too. To put away sin, read. By the sacrifice of himself. By the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, mm -hmm. but after this, the judgment. Mm -hmm. So the Messiah was once offered to bear the sins of many. Mm -hmm. and he, so man. he's bearing the sins of many. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. See, death reigned from what? Adam down to the Yahshua the Messiah. See? And that's why he's putting an end to that death part. See? The death. So that he can make someone that believed in him make them alive. What are you talking about? You have a soul. That's the spiritual part of the man. Mm -hmm. You have a soul that can have the satanic spirit in it or the spirit of Joshua. And you cannot have both of them at the same time. No way, Jose. Have the, the spirit of Joshua the Messiah in there. See? And he cast out the satanic spirit. So you only have one spirit in there, which is Joshua the Messiah. See? Or you can have the satanic spirit. And you see all the things out here in the world, all the murders, all the, everything that's going on, that's that old satanic spirit. Mm -hmm. And he's really doing his job real well. Yeah. Right down here at the end. Yeah. All right? So here, he comes in this post-Diluvian age. He is the true Jew. And he put, and dies on this cross. Then, if you've been listening all the time, then he came back on the day of Pentecost and poured his spirit out in Acts, the second chapter, and to those Jews in the upper room. Mm -hmm. And it has to be the upper room. Showing the height, see, showing that he comes, he comes into our heart and in our mind. And he came to the Jew first. Now the Jews had all these things that the world is actually doing today. Ceremonies, Passover, Ten Commandments, see, uh, the sacrifices. Water baptism, physical circumcision. Now, they this is done in various religions. Not every, not everyone is is circumcised. That the, that was for the Jewish people. You understand? So they won't do that. There's no way. Okay, but they get water baptized in order to be a member of a church. All right. Then they've got this. Uh, the Lord's Supper, or basically 
uh, uh, communion. That, try to get into that too. Touch on that a little bit. Okay? Then the, 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 the Ten Commandments. But see, see this hand? Mm -hmm. It's showing forth what? That it says nailed to the cross. Okay. Let's talk about these carnal oranges are nailed to the cross. By Joshua the Messiah. Okay? Now, give me uh, Matthew 5, 17. And then after that, let's go and get uh, 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 Matthew 3 and 11. Okay? Matthew 5, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. He said, now the law, which this is the Old Testament, or the carnal words that he gave to the Jews and the Jews only. See? No Gentile had that. See? But we also have to bring this in that he told uh, Abraham that in his seed he was going to bless all the families of the earth. Right. Jew and Gentile. Okay? So, and if you've heard what I said on the day of Pentecost, he gave the Holy Spirit to the Jews first. Then seven years later, the Gentiles came in. All right? Read. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Mm -hmm. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. But to fulfill. What does that mean? To complete, finish, end, accomplish. Mm -hmm. You see? Now, why, why we're doing that, we're just going to show you more proof. Give me Isaiah 55 and 11. And then I want also one, because what we want to see about what he went through. Give me Isaiah 53rd chapter. <clears throat> Isaiah 55 verse 11. Mm -hmm. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. The word go forth out of, his, out of his mouth. Read. It shall not return unto me void. It's not going to return unto me void. See, it's going to complete something. Read. But it shall accomplish that which I please. It's going to accomplish that which he please. Read. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Mm -hmm. It's going to prosper. Now that's what we have to see. That does it prosper in us? Right. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. And I got to tell you, even though you might have the Holy Spirit, that devil's always present. I said, now you should have done this, or you should have did, you should have, look what he did to you, or what, look, you know what I mean? Yeah. See, I mean, he's always after you. Yeah. You know why? Because he knows that his end is near. So he's going to be pressuring us, those that believe in the whole true gospel of Yahshua and Messiah. Right. Say, yeah. mm -hmm. read. Okay. Uh, 53. Yeah, Isaiah 53. 53. Isaiah 53 and 1. Mm -hmm. Who has believed our report? Now, that's another thing. Who hath believed our report? It's a report about him and what he did for us. Read. And to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? Mm -hmm. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness. That means he wasn't good looking. Right. See? And all these pictures you see of the so-called, we'll say, Jesus, you know, this picture, yeah. uh, pretty blonde hair, blue eyes, nice looking nose and mouth. <laughs> so he wasn't good looking. Read. He has no form nor comeliness. Mm -hmm. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Mm -hmm. he, is he just like the... Same old Joe. Okay, read. He's despised and rejected of men. And he's despised and rejected of men. Now, have you to know that's what's going on now? Yeah. He's despised and rejected by that old satanic spirit. See, trying to make you believe that you've got to be baptized in water. you got to go to the church of your choice and all that. Read. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Mm -hmm. 
and we hid, as it were, our face from him. Mm -hmm. He is despised, and we esteemed him not. Now, I want you to know, if he was despised, <laughs> you're going to be despised. You're not going to be liked. You understand? Because he said, certainly wasn't like they put him on the cross. Breathe. Surely he has borne our griefs mm -hmm. and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, mm -hmm. smitten of Elohim, and afflicted. Right. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded for our transgressions. What are you talking about? That He did all this for us. Mm -hmm. You see this? His flesh was flayed apart. Do you understand? This is a pretty picture here, but when he was on that cross, man, that was an ugly looking picture of him. Do you understand? A bloody mess. Read. And he did that for us. Now, if we get cut on our finger or something like we go, oh, wow, we got to get a Band-Aid or whatever. Do you understand? But look what happened to him. He went through all that for us. Right. Read. He was wounded for our transgression. Mm -hmm. He was bruised for our iniquity. Mm -hmm. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Mm -hmm. And with his stripes, we are healed. Wait a minute. By his stripes, by what he did on this cross, we are healed. Why? What are you talking about? When he came back on the day of Pentecost, he came back to the Jew first, then to the Gentile. And here we are down at the end of an age, and he put his spirit in us. In our soul. What a beautiful story. Right. Great. All we like sheep have gone astray. Mm -hmm. We have turned everyone to his own way. And Yahweh, or Yahshua, has laid, Yahweh has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Mm -hmm. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened on his mouth. Oh, he didn't open his mouth. He allowed them to do that. You understand? Okay, now get the next scripture I call it, if you will. Matthew 3, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Now here is Joshua coming to John. we got a picture right here. Mm -hmm. And John is probably wondering what's going on. But he really didn't know who at this point in time until Yahweh showed him. Read. Matthew 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. No, start with 11. Is that where you're at? Yes. Okay, start with 9. 3 and 9. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. Mm -hmm. For I say unto you, that Yahweh is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Now, what stones was he talking about? Mm -hmm. See? They laid stones here at the River Jordan when, in order to, uh, to show that they went on through the divided waters of the River Jordan unto uh, Canaan land. Okay? Now read. And now also the axe is laid unto And those Jerusalem. 12 stones were the 12 tribes. They signifying them. All right? Read. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the tree. Mm-hmm. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not for good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Okay, read. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Who's saying that? This John the Baptist. And he was the last one under the law. The last prophet under the law. They, but this John the Baptist had the Holy Spirit. All right, read. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, mm -hmm. whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Mm -hmm. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Now look, he's saying that his baptism is of water, but Joshua's baptism is going to be of the fire and the Holy Spirit. See? Now, that's not physical. Now, when he's baptizing Joshua, that's water is physical. Isn't that right? Water is physical. All right? So John is saying that his baptism is not as, 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 as good as Joshua the Messiah. But, read. 
He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That's what he's going to baptize you with, the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, think about this. John had to have the Holy Spirit in order to say that. How did he know that? Do you understand? That Joshua was going to be baptized with fire and the Holy Spirit. All right, read. Matthew 3.13. Then cometh Joshua from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. Mm -hmm. But John forbade him. He's, now he said, look. Really what he said, look, you're greater than I am. But he says, John forbade him, read. John forbade him, read. Say, I have need to be baptized of thee. See, he recognizes that he needs to be baptized of Joshua. All right, read. And comest thou to me? Mm -hmm. And Joshua answering said unto him, mm -hmm. Suffer it to be so now. It, what I'm doing now, see, this is important right now, that you baptize me. Because you're baptizing the, the dead Jews. And the Jews at that point in time were dead in their heart and in their mind and in their soul. So Joshua had to come in and he's fulfilling here. See, he's fulfilling what happened here at the Red Sea. How that the children of Israel were baptized in, in the cloud and in the sea. All right, read. Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. So what, that's what he's doing. He's fulfilling. And we know that what that means, he's completing something. He's finishing something. He's doing something with a principle here. Read. Then he suffered him. And then he suffered him. Read. And Joshua, when he was baptized, mm -hmm. went up straightway out of the water. <laughs> he went straight out of the water. Read. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And the heavens were opened. The heavens were opened. Read. And he saw the Spirit of Yahweh. He saw the Spirit of Yahweh. Read. Descending like a dove. Descending like a dove. See, we got that dove picture right up here. Read. And lighting upon him. And lighting upon him. Read. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, mm -hmm. This is my beloved son. Just like what Dr. Kinley, that lecture, he said, Have you heard the voice of Yahweh? You understand? Now here we go right here. Read. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, mm -hmm. This is my beloved son. This is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. He's well pleased because he's going by the law and the prophets, which Yahweh sent him to do. He came in to finish the law that was given unto the Jews, not the Gentiles. So there's a problem then, if that be the case. And he nailed them to the cross. So on this side, water baptism is not needed. It's the baptism of the Holy Spirit with fire. Now, I don't have much time. So let's just clean that one up. So let's get uh, <clears throat> Acts 18 and 24. Now remember, this baptism was of fire and of the Holy Spirit. See? But John's was of water. See? And John had to baptize those Jews, see, signifying they were dead. And then they could be risen with Joshua and the Messiah in their heart and mind in Acts, the second chapter. All right, read. Acts 17 and 24. Mm -hmm. Or, I'm sorry, 18. That's right. 18 and 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos born at Alexandria, mm -hmm. an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. Mm -hmm. This man was instructed in the way of Yahweh. Now he said, was instructed in the way of Yahweh. Now, get me the last chapter of uh, Matthew. <clears throat> and you can continue to read. He was um, instructed in the way of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. the way of Yahweh, and being fervent in the Spirit, spake and taught diligently the things of Yahweh, knowing only the baptism of John. He, oh, he only knew the baptism of John, which was of water. Right. The baptism of John. That's all he knew. Read. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. And Aquila and Priscilla had heard him, had heard, they took him Unto them and expounded unto him the way of Yahweh more perfectly. 
What? He's up here preaching and he's up there talking that you must be baptized in water. But now they're taking him and say, look, that's not the way it is. See? So they're trying to instruct him. Read. And when he was disposed to pass into Archaea, and the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace. For he, he mightily convic, convic, yeah. convinced the Jews and that pri, privately, publicly. publicly, showing by the scriptures that Yahshua was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So he's showing that Yahshua is the Messiah. See? All right. Three. In 1901, and it came mm -hmm. to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said... Now, that's that, that same Paul that was telling them about he, he, that he's not worshipped in, his, in yeah. churches they, or right. in temples made with hands. Mm -hmm. Read. And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? He said, Now, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? Well, obviously, he believes in something. Okay, read. And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Spirit. Mm, he didn't even know anything about the Holy Spirit. Well, see, that's what happens if Yahweh puts his spirit in you. That's him in you. That's the Holy Spirit. So he didn't have, doesn't even know what the name, what the Holy Spirit, what that was. See, read. That's something new to him. See, read. He only knew the baptism of John. Read. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? He said, now what then were you baptized? And they said, now you know, baptism, baptized does not mean the water. Right. Not, you see, you understand, you can be immersed in things. Yes. See, it does not mean being baptized in water. They read. And they said, unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, now, no, when he said, unto John's baptism. Yeah. See, now, in order to join, a, to join a church, you are usually sprinkled with water, you're dunked in water, water baptism. Right. Is that right? Right. They read. Then said Paul, John verily baptized, baptized with the baptism of repentance, mm -hmm. saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, mm -hmm. that is, on Yahshua the Messiah. Mm hmm when they heard this, when they heard this, they when were, they heard this, read. They were baptized. Wait a minute. The That's the self same thing. If you're look, looking for Yahshua Messiah, and that Yahshua preaches unto you, mm -hmm. see, and you hear his voice, that's Yahshua entertaining you and educating you and putting his spirit in you. Do you understand what I'm saying? See, so read. And when they heard this, they because were you are entertained when you when you hear the gospel. Yeah, you're definitely entertained. That's what you want. Mm -hmm. It's better than any music, yeah. any TV show, any movie. You understand? Yeah. It's better than food itself. To be truthful, that's that Holy Spirit. That's what you desire. See, that's why we got these plates. We're preaching off the plates. This is food. This is spiritual food. Mm -hmm. See? We want to grow in the spirit. Read. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And when Paul had laid his hands on And they were baptized him. in the name of Yahshua the Messiah, not Jesus Christ. Fictitious name. Say, read. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them. Oh, the Holy Spirit came on them. And they spake with tongues and prophesied. Okay. Now, get the other scriptures I called for. Matthew 28, 18. Mm -hmm. And Joshua came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Mm -hmm. Go ye therefore. He said, now go ye therefore and teach all nations. Teach all nations. That's what we come down here 
to hear the teacher, which is Joshua the Messiah. That's that's the real teacher. You understand? Yes. See, read. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, mm -hmm. baptizing them in the name of the Father. Wait a minute, baptizing in the water. In the name. Huh? It says in the name. What is the name? Yahshua. Yah is salvation. That's the Holy Spirit. That's how you're being baptized, knowing about Yahshua and Messiah. See? Mm -hmm. And I, just, uh, I don't have much time. I want to get this one in because we have to be, uh, uh, give glory to Yahweh and his son, Yahshua. But we've got to find out at the climax or the end of this age what's going to occur. Mm -hmm. So get me uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 24, I think it is. Let me make sure. You got it? 1 Corinthians 15, 24. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered... Okay, start at 22. 22. Mm -hmm. 15 and 22. For as in Adam all die. As in Adam all die. They, Even so in the Messiah shall all be made alive. All be made alive through Yahshua the Messiah. That's what we preach down here. See? Read. But every man in his own order... Mm -hmm. The Messiah, the first fruits, afterwards they that are the Messiahs at his coming. Mm -hmm. Then cometh the end. Then when, cometh the end. When he shall have delivered and up. That's the when kingdom. he's closing this thing out, which he's about ready to do. Mm -hmm. This fourth kingdom age. We're at the brinks of eternity. And let me tell you, I heard that so many times down through the time that I've been in class on the brinks. But Believe you me, we are right down at the conclusion of this age, at the brinks of eternity. Yes. See, we're right down there. Mm. Read. Then come at the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of Yahweh, mm -hmm. the kingdom to Yahweh. Wait a minute now, the kingdom of Yahweh. This is key right here. Mm -hmm. Because Yahweh sent his son, see, in the world to save sinners. Is that right? Then at the conclusion of this age now, see, read, that's why we know it's Yahweh, <coughs> these three are one, Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua the Messiah. But we've got to give kudos to Yahweh, because he's the one that created all the, these heavens and the earth. Read. When he shall de have delivered of the kingdom to Yahweh. Mm -hmm. The kingdom Father, to Yahweh. When he but should, then you look and you say, now, wait a minute now. This is Joshua. Well, I have you know you. Joshua is Yahweh. That's right. That was manifested yeah. in the flesh. Yeah. You understand? He did his job. Mm -hmm. He accomplished it. He fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And read. Even the Father, mm -hmm. when he shall have put down all rule. When he all put down authority. all rule, see, that's at the end of this age. Ready? All rule and all authority mm -hmm. and power. Mm -hmm. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Mm -hmm. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Is death. The last enemy is death. What are you talking about? Physical death. Mm -hmm. Spiritual life. Say, read. And for that... He, this death is due down through all the time. See, look at that. It says death. See? Father of lies. He's concluding everything. See? And what's the destination of the satanic spirit? The lake of fire. But have you know he's in the lake ground. And he doesn't even realize it. See, he always got it. See? All right, read. For he has put all things under his feet. Mm -hmm. But when he saith all things are put under him, mm -hmm. it is manifest, he is accepted. He is accepted, read. Which did put all things under him. Mm -hmm. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto oh, him. Oh, the Son is subject. Unto him. But see, that's things. really Yahweh manifested in the flesh. Mm -hmm. But he had to come in the likeness of sinful flesh to redeem them that were under the law and to pour out his Holy Spirit unto them. Read. 
That Yahweh may be all in all. That Yahweh may be all in all. And that's all. <laughs> but you know, we have such a great, wonderful gospel. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you should be honored just to come in to yeah. and hear the gospel being yeah. preached. Yeah. Hear it on tapes. See? Yeah. Read the Bible. Many transcripts that we got. Yeah. We are blessed, folks. Yeah. These are jewels, mm -hmm. gems. Some people don't really see it because if they did, if they were healthy, they'd be here. Yeah. See? And some are healthy, but they're staying out. They're not coming. You know? And all I know is what Dr. Kinley said. Mm -hmm. Many times, I was a little kid, and he said, come to class because you're going to need it. Right. You know, and I'm thinking like, what? I'm going to need what? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> you know what I mean? But now I know. Yeah. See, so God needed it. Got to need him. He's my father. He's my mother. He's my everything. And that should be for you also. Joshua the Messiah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ronald Carr. That brings a conclusion to tonight's lecture. We'd like to cordially invite all visitors and friends to return here and study with us. Classes are held each Tuesday and Thursday evenings from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. and on Sundays from 11 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. here in our class building at 308 Montgomery Avenue in Springfield, Ohio. Would the class please stand to be led in doxology. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present your and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah our sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever, let the class say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.